that will not be there. Employment, unemployment rate is high. Millions of people are filing for unemployment benefits. Stimulus checks have been sent out and been received. And now they're playing political volleyball in the courts of Congress. Cashing checks that will take generations to repay. Just making money. Paying for things that don't need to be paid for. Simply because it's politically expedient. Medical professionals and government officials struggle to explain how it is that we got here. And even more than that, to try to tell us how we'll get out of it. I'm not concerned about the COVID-19 task force in the White House. I'm not concerned about the officials at the CDC or the World Health Organization. I'm not concerned about the head of the FDA because I understand that medicine, science, and government are woefully inadequate when it comes to interpreting the signs of the times. I told you before and I will repeat it today that now is the time for the sons of Issachar to arise. The sons of Issachar had the ability to interpret the signs of the times. Not only is it time for the sons of Issachar to arise, it's time, yeah, it's time for those who would be like the Bereans of old, who studied in the scriptures to find out what God wanted to do. Listen to me, my people. Listen to me, beloved. Far too many of us have been content to just simply go through the motions. From day to day, from service to service, from Bible study to Bible study. I'm not going to accuse you of not being saved. That's not my province. But I will simply tell you that we're living at a time when that kind of nonchalant behavior will simply not cut it. God is looking for more from us than that. You need to understand that even though we cannot definitively tell you how this happened or where it happened or when it's going to go away, I will tell you that nothing happens in the economy of God by accident. There are no accidents with God. There are no accidents with God. In fact, there are cosmic consequences to every occurrence. Doesn't matter what you do, there is a cosmic consequence to that. And what I mean by that is that it has an impact in the spirit world. Amen. There's an impact there that we have to pay attention to. And God called us, we who are his people, we who count ourselves among the twice born and the blood bought, blood washed body of Christ. God has called us to obey. God has called us to obedience and, and not only has he called us to obedience, but he told us the consequences of both obedience and disobedience. I believe that one of the reasons that our world is in the shape that it is in is because those of us who claim to have a relationship with him have been more interested in building our own houses than we have in building the house of the Lord. That we've been more interested in building up our own portfolios than we have in doing what God called us to do. That we've been more interested in the accolades and the acclaim and the applause of other people than we are in how God thinks about us. 
that we're more interested in doing what pleases us than that which pleases God. And I believe that what we're seeing right now, whether God caused it or God is using it, is the consequences of our disobedience. Now, I understand it. I get it. There's some who are listening right now who will probably tune me out and go to somebody else's service uh, because you think I'm being too harsh in my assessment. But I want to tell somebody today who is listening, somebody who is watching, I want to tell you today, there's no way to get around what God has declared in his word. And his word does not change. Just like God himself does not change. Is that right, Brother Satar? God says, I, the Lord, do not change. God says of his own word, Mother Hikes, he said, my word is the same today as it was yesterday and it will be forever. So if the word of God is the same today as it was yesterday and will always be, then there's no way that we can discount it. God says that there's a consequence to your disobedience just like there is a consequence to your obedience. How is it that God is going to bless you but not also curse you? Oh, I hear, I hear, I hear, Sister Leslie, uh, I hear that bunch that would stand back and say, no, the God we serve is too good to punish his people. The God we serve is too good to ever cause anything evil to happen to his people, but I remind you, that the God we serve in the New Testament is the same God that we served in the Old Testament. God was a God of wrath in the Old Testament. He's a God of wrath in the New Testament. God was a God of love in the Old Testament. He's a God of love in the New Testament. Amen. We have reduced this God we serve to one that fits our notion rather than walking in obedience to his word. Sister Ruth, the seasons change. Hallelujah. Those of you who, who are, are, are struggling through this difficult season of pollen, thank God seasons change. Amen. Seasons change. Seasons change. So whatever, Brother Ernest, you're going through, you can count on the fact that there is just like there was a beginning, there's going to be an end. Because seasons change. The one constant, I'm glad it's a constant, is the word of God that never changes. Listen, let me tell you something. We are still called to obedience. Amen. Nothing has changed with that. We are still called to obedience. And this is an apostolic ministry. The purpose of an apostolic ministry is to bring the church, the body of Christ, back fully into a lifestyle of obedience of faith. I want to call us back to obedience. I want to call somebody back to obedience. Sister Bentu, I know there's some who can remember how zealous they were when they first came to the Lord. Some of you sitting here right now, can you remember how on fire for the Lord you were when you first found him? Excuse me. When he first found you, because he was never lost. Do you remember how on fire you were? Do, 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 does anybody remember when you got that Bible and you wouldn't even write in that Bible? Because you didn't want to deface it. Yeah, when, when, when it seemed like there were Christian bookstores. Has anybody noticed that Christian bookstores have all but disappeared? Do you remember going to Christian bookstores because you had to find just the right cover for your Bible? Sister Ruth, there were some people who even had the gift of sewing that made their own covers for their Bibles. Some of you remember that whenever the doors of the church were open, you were there. You didn't want to miss out. And it didn't even have to be just your church. One of your coworkers said, we have a revival. Where? I'm there. You were on fire. One of the most horrific things that ever happened is to run into one of the older saints in the church that had lost their fire. And they'd look at you and tell you, honey, it don't take all that. 
you're going to bellow after a while. I want to call you back to obedience. Some of you remember times when there were certain things that you would not allow yourself to do. Not because there was a word that said thou shalt not. But where you were in your relationship with the Lord, that was incompatible. I want to call you back to obedience. I want to issue a clarion call today for everyone that will listen. Every believer, hear me. It is time to obey. It is time to obey. You're in a difficult season. But in this season, somebody say this season. What we need to be focusing on is how can we make our faith more obedient. I believe that this is an unusual opportunity, Brother Sartar. I believe it is an unusual opportunity, a, a, a time for us to discern, a time for us to distinguish between what we have received from God. To distinguish and discern what God is doing. In a previous season, it was taught to us that, that, that it, was, it was our faith that was the problem. I'm going to suggest to you today, it's not your faith that's the problem, it's your obedience or your lack of obedience. Amen. You see, there are a lot of people who have faith. They believe the word of God, but they refuse to obey it. There are a lot of people that will look at you and say, I know that that's the right way to go, but I'm just not ready to go that way right now. Some of you have encountered them in your evangelistic outreach. Oh yeah, I, I know that's the right way to go. I know that's what I need to do, but I'm not ready yet. I, I've got more living that I want to do. It's time to obey. And I believe that in this season, that the faith that we're trying to perfect the word that we're trying to perfect, this faith that, 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 that gets stronger and, and brings us even greater obedience, it's a cycle. Our faith should be leading us to obedience, but it's our obedience that leads us to greater faith. Did you get that? It's a cycle. It's Our faith brings us to obedience, but then our obedience brings us to greater faith. And then faith brings us to obedience, and our obedience brings us to greater faith. It's a cycle that we continue in. You see, faith measures, it operates in measure. We go from no faith to little faith to much faith. And wrapped up in the midst of all of that is the level of our obedience. The two go hand in hand. You need obedience to go along with your faith. And so the faith to which we have been called is to be a lifestyle. Somebody say lifestyle. It's to be a lifestyle of total obedience. In this season, somebody say this season. Right now, COVID-19, in this season, Brother Howard, uh, we cannot choose what to obey and what to disobey. Amen. I can remember some years ago when somebody asked me if, if I could back off teaching a certain thing in the Bible. And I believe it was the Holy Spirit that prompted me to do so. Brother Satar, I handed him my Bible and a pair of scissors. And I said this, everything in here I'm not allowed to preach, you cut it out. The response was, I can't do that. My response is, then neither can I. Because if it's in here, I'm going to preach it. Some of us are like that. Now listen, can we be honest for a moment? Sister Ruth, there are times when I'm reading the Bible and it hits me between the eyes like a two by four. And those are times I'm not all that happy with God. I'm happy in Jesus, but you know what I mean by that? Y'all don't look at me judging me. I get to the place where I'm like, Lord, you know, you and I were cool until you just said that. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about that picking and choosing. I'm talking about you twisting the word of God because you don't want to obey in this area. 
popular things that people say. Well, this is a different time. Come on, this is 2020. That was written a very long time ago. No, the word of God is what the same today as was yesterday and it will be forever. You cannot pick and choose. My brothers and my sisters, we have to obey the word of God. All the way from the beginning of the first book, Genesis, to the end of the last book, Revelation. And everything in between. Every word was written for your benefit. Every word was written so that you might walk in the abundance of life that Jesus himself said that he came to give us. So we have to, in this season, somebody in to say in this season, we have to be willing to move in complete unwavering faith. Unwavering faith. So there's a couple things I want to say to you. I have a couple points and then just a couple sub points underneath them. The first thing that I want to say to you is that our obedience, your obedience has purpose. Somebody say, my obedience has purpose. Come on, say it again, nice and loud. My obedience has purpose. There's a reason why you're called to obey. What's the reason that you're called to obey the first reason that you're called to obey sister Ruth is so that your faith can be developed so that your faith can be developed you have faith but what has to happen with your faith is that it has to change and enlarge your faith has to become stronger and more impressive your faith has to advance, it has to arise, it has to increase. So obedience here is defined, Deacon, this way. It's defined this way as intelligent listening. Obedience is defined as intelligent, intelligent listening. What do I mean by that? I mean listening with the intent to act on the command. How many times have, have you told somebody or somebody told you you're not listening? Well, come on. You, you were speaking nice and loudly. It's not that they were not listening. They heard you well. The problem is that you didn't see within their listening that there was any intention to act on what you were saying. Are, are y'all hearing me? Hence you say, you're not listening. So obedience is intelligent listening. So Sister Patricia, when you say, I'm obeying God, what you are really saying is that God, I have every intention of doing what you've called me to do. Mother Hikes, I'm going to invoke the memory of Dad Hikes. Years ago, when we were moving into a building on the other side of town, and we had to do some renovation in that building, one of the things that we did, it had these really big windows, and, and in these windows, I mean, these are huge windows, and we were hanging up these uh, lovelier blinds. They were real big and long and wide. Yeah, some of you were with me back. Do you remember those blinds? We were hanging them up. Now, the problem was is that the building was a block building. And then the header across the top of the window was a solid plate of steel. The only way to hang the brackets, uh, Deacon Tyrone, was that you had to drill through the metal plate in order to install the bracket for the blinds I don't know how many drill bits I burst, broke and I'm up on a ladder because it was way high I'm up on the ladder I'm just trying to drill through it and I hear somebody chuckling behind me and I turn around and it's dad hikes and dad hikes looks at me and I look at him and I said why are you laughing am I doing something wrong he said no pastor he says, you think you can do anything, don't you? And this is what I said to him. If you tell me, 
I can do it. See, that's what obedience is. Obedience is I'm listening. I'm listening. This artist, I'm listening to you, Lord. I'm listening because I'm waiting on instruction. Because I have every intention. Oh, okay, let me try it a different way. How many of you use your GPS in your car? Okay, maybe you don't use it around town, but when you travel to a place you've never been before, use your GPS, right? And and your GPS, or in your car or your phone connector, whatever, use your GPS, right? Right? Use it, right? And one of the things that you hate is that for some reason your GPS waits to the last second to tell you where to turn. Now you got to reroute because you missed your turn. What you're, so what you learn to do with your GPS is you learn to, to listen and if you're able to watch the screen a little bit, you know what I've discovered is that my GPS will start beeping at me 500 feet away from the turn. But even before that, it's telling me to get over in this lane. So, so I'm listening, y'all are following me? I'm listening to the instructions because I need to obey. Now, in that instance, I need to obey. Why? Because I'm trying to get somewhere. Y'all just missed it. Obedience to what God is calling you to is the same reason. You listen because you're trying to get somewhere. And you know that God is trying to get you there. So obedience has a purpose. The first purpose is to develop your faith. To develop your faith means literally to cause it to arise, to cause it to increase, to cause it to be more impressive. And the way that happens is that you have to practice intelligent listening. It's smart to listen. I was with Dad Logan, Lady Cece and I, uh, the week before last, and we were joking about as kids putting together, you've heard me tell this story, the, the balsam wood the railroad cars that dad would bring home because he was in night school. He'd bring them home, my brother, I have a brother 18 months younger than me, uh, to keep us busy. Uh, he'd bring home those models and we would sit there and put them together. But br br brother Howard, what we'd do is we'd dump those models out on the table, all the pieces, and we'd get the glue, the tube of glue, and we would start gluing everything together. And in a very short period of time, we were back in front of my father who was studying and complaining that they won't work. The wheels wouldn't turn. The carriages wouldn't turn. And all my dad would do, Brother Satar, is look at us and say, did you read the directions? That's when I first learned one of Murphy's laws. When all else fails, read the directions. You see, some of you are failing in life. Things are not going the way you would have them to go. Because you failed to read the directions. And then even when you read the directions, you have failed to follow them. How many of you have had the experience of messing up and find yourself in the presence of God sniffing and snotting and crying and God say to you um, why are you surprised I told you not to do it I told you it was going to be a mess if you did I have a witness here you see we're in a situation right now for whatever reason because we have chosen not to obey God there's a second reason a second purpose for obedience and the second purpose and those who were in my tea training yesterday will remember this it is to bring us contentment and peace your obedience brings you contentment and peace let me say it differently your obedience brings you contentment and peace I can remember Mom Logan saying to us when we were growing up, let me talk to you about contentment and peace. <laughs> Hard heads. Make, oh, oh, 
raised, did she raise you too? Make for a sore behinds. Any of y'all heard that before? Huh? Listen, listen, I have a sister and a brother that just insisted on doing exactly what they were told not to do. And I would cry for them. I'd look at them and I'd say, y'all stupid. Ma told you what she was going to do. Now you think she's not going to do it? I made up my mind a long time ago when I was a kid. I'm going to do my best to stay out of trouble because I want to be content <laughs> and I want to walk, y'all now listen to me, I want to walk in peace. Are, are y'all hearing me? It's a little different slant on contentment and peace, but the same thing is true. If you want to be content, obey. You don't want to hear me holler? Obey. You don't want to be restricted in your activity? Obey. You want to go from glory to glory? Obey. You want to receive blessing on top of blessing? Obey. You want your business to prosper? Obey. You want your children to, to flourish? Obey. It's as simple as that. The purpose of our obedience is to bring us contentment and peace. Are y'all getting this? It's not just so that you can be mindless automatons that just go about doing what the word of God says to do just for the sake of doing it. It has a purpose. It develops your faith. And it brings you contentment and peace. How many of you thank God for contentment and peace? Amen. Amen. Everybody today is talking about prosperity. Look at somebody and tell them prosperity is relative. No, prosperity really is re relative. I mean, prosperity is not just talking about goo gobs of money. Prosperity is talking about how content you are with what you have. Amen. How faithful you are over what you've already received. So your obedience has a purpose. Now listen, in, in, in previous seasons, if certain things didn't happen for you, people made you believe that it was because you simply did not have enough faith. Oh, you're sick? It's because you don't have enough faith. You're not a millionaire yet? Oh, it's because you don't have enough faith. But faith comes by hearing. And hearing is obedience. <laughs> or I already told you, intelligent listening with the intent to act. So my faith comes when I hear. My hearing is obedience, which is intelligent listening. The intent to act. My faith is built that kind of way. So obedience has a purpose. But here's my second point for you to get. Look at somebody and tell them it's time to obey. Here's the second point. Obedience also has consequences. Obedience has consequences. Amen. It has consequences. Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 28. I recognize I never did read John 14, 15, but I'll come back to that. Obedience has consequences. When you look at Deuteronomy chapter 28, it says, if you diligently obey the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments, which I command you today, the Lord will set you high above all the nations of the earth. You know, the Bible says that it's righteousness that exalts a nation. Righteousness that exalts a nation is not the size of your weapon stockpile. It's not your gross national product. It's not the prosperity of the people. 
It's righteousness. Righteousness, which is right standing with God. God says, if you diligently obey the Lord your God. I don't have the statistics today, but I want you to think with me for a moment. Ever since Roe v. Wade, how many abortions have taken place in this country? How many lives were just completely wiped away? I want you to think for a moment all that we have done in our time under the banner of civil rights. Everybody, everything they want to do suddenly is a civil right. We have no control of what the world does. So I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about the body of Christ. Think with me for a moment, the number of abortions in the body of Christ. Think with me for a moment, the number of counterproductive, ungodly, immoral behavior right in the body of Christ. And no, I'm not talking about same sex only. I'm talking about immorality in totality. Y'all don't want to hear me. the thing that we need to understand when it comes to consequences, God says, I'm going to set you high above the nations. Amen. Thank God we want you to set us high above the nations. But that's only if you obey. In order for that to happen, everything that we do individually and collectively, and let me say that is also true of we as a ministry, we as a church, we as the ecclesia, we as the body of believers, everything that we do must be brought into subjection to Jesus Christ. Not to me, the bishop, not to me, your pastor, not to any of the leaders, but to Jesus Christ. Christ, you see, is the living word. And when we obey him, and the way we obey him is when we become slaves to him. Do you recognize that God leaves us a free will? But when you make up your mind to be a slave of Christ, you surrender your free will to the will of God. You all miss that. Slaves have no will of their own. They exist to serve the will of their master. Jesus is my master. Now he doesn't take my free will away from me. Because what he says to me is that I leave you free to do whatever it is that you want to do. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. What I want to do is please him. And because that's what I want to do, mother, there's a whole lot of other things I will not let myself do because they don't please him. Everything has to be brought into submission to Christ. Now, the, the, the second sub-point for that is, is the reason why that is true is because our conduct when we obey is conformed to God's command. Our conduct when we obey is conformed to God's will, to God's command. Amen. I don't understand. But God, I'm going to do it anyhow. Isn't that right, Sister Ruth? I don't get it. I don't know why you want me to do it this way. Lord, I don't know why you want me to minister to this person. Lord, I don't know why you want me to go over here. I don't know why you want me to be here. But because you told me to do it, that's what I'm going to do. In other words, my conduct is going to be conformed to your command. Lord, they mistreated me. <laughs> They mistreated me horribly. What I really want to do is I want to go upside their head. What I really want to do is I want to pack my things and go. What I really want to do is I want to quit this job. What I really want to do is, is this or that. But Lord, because you have commanded me and my will is submitted to your will, I'm going to do what you said do. Now y'all looking at me funny, but how many of you know sometimes we have to be dragged kicking and screaming into the will of God? Amen. Sometimes we're just like the like those uh, pouty children having a tantrum. Uh, I don't want to do it. 
But when you obey, your conduct gets conformed. But there's another consequence to that. And this is the negative consequence. Go to verse 15. We looked at that already. But it shall come about if you do not obey the Lord your God to observe to do all his commandments and the statutes with which I charge you today. All these curses will come upon you and overtake you. It's an interesting time, Sister Bentu, that we're in. We, there's so many believers. All they want is the blessings of God. Just tell me how I'm going to be blessed. Tell me about my new house. Tell me about my new car. Tell me about my new job. Tell me about the new spouse I'm getting. Tell me about the kids that are coming. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. All the blessings. Bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me. But God says, when you refuse to obey... Here's the third point. You're going to endure the judgment of God. You're going to endure the judgment of God. There's no way to get around it. Now, I didn't read this before, so let me read it now. Verse 16, Cursed shall you be in the city, and cursed shall you be in the country. Cursed shall be your, bras uh, your basket and your kneading bowl. Cursed shall be the offspring of your body and the produce of your ground, the increase of your herd and the young of your flock. Cursed shall, be, shall you be when you come in, and cursed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will send upon you curses, confusion, and rebuke, and all you undertake to do until, somebody say until, until you are destroyed and until you perish quickly on account of the evil of your deeds because you have forsaken me. The Lord will make the pestilence cling to you until he has consumed you from the land where you are entering to possess it. The Lord will smite you with consumption and with fever and with inflammation and with fiery heat and with the sword and with blight and with mildew and they will pursue you until you perish. The heaven which is over your head shall be bronze and the earth which is under you iron. The Lord will make the rain of your land powder and dust. From heaven it shall come down on you until you are destroyed. The Lord will cause you to be defeated before your eyes. Uh, I can't even continue to read this because of how horrific it is. But you say God is too good to cause any of these things. No, God has already told you. It's because you, rather than being the sons and daughters of obedience, you persist in being sons and daughters of disobedience my friends my sisters and my brothers take me to that John 14 15 I want you to look at that for a moment John 14 15 if you love me Jesus says you will keep my commandments if you love me in other words Jesus is saying if you love me you'll obey me I'm not interested in how well you can sing, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. That's just a song to you. I want to see it exemplified and demonstrated in your living. Because if you love me, you'll obey me. I believe that now is the time for us to come back to obedience. There's no better time than the present to resolve to return to steadfastly obeying the will of the Father. I cannot assure you today that an instantaneous return is going to simultaneously reverse the season in which you find yourself. But I can assure you that if you persist in disobedience, you will remain where you are longer than you need to remain. Moses spent 40 years in the wilderness. I believe Moses spent 40 years in the wilderness because it took Moses 40 years to get Egypt out of him so that he could be ready to lead the people out of Egypt some of you are going to stay in the seasons in which you find yourselves far longer than you need to simply because you will not make the decision to obey it's time to obey because I can assure you that pestilence will cling to you. Because that's the promise of God. Until you make up your mind that now is the time to obey. Now, you're not going to hear many preachers talk about this season in this manner. 
Instead, what we want to do is talk about how we've been victimized. We even have gone to the route of making accusation of those who are perhaps genuinely trying to help of trying to steal our civil liberties whether that's true or not is for a debate in another time in another place but what is true what we can cling to is that none of this makes any difference at all in terms of what God has called us to and God has called us to obedience Christ I will obey I'll do what you called me to do I'll say what you called me to say I will be in the places you called me to be I will obey when I feel like it and when I don't I will obey you even when I don't feel it I will obey you simply because you said it I want to be known by my obedience I can assure you that you will have no hope of hearing your Savior say well done my good and faithful servant if you have persisted in disobedience Saul found out the hard way didn't he Saul was commanded by God to completely and utterly wipe out the Amalekites finally wipe them out remember they had been left alive over the generations but God said enough is enough wipe them out don't leave any of them around don't even leave any of their livestock get rid of them completely but Saul did what he had a mind to do and God repented that he had ever made Saul king and he sent Samuel to anoint David king and then he sent Samuel to find Saul so that he could inform him that his job had just been terminated but Saul was not where he was supposed to be instead Saul had gone over yonder to set up a statue to himself he was basking in his glory in the magnificent defeat that he'd had over the Amalekites but when Samuel got there and asked him what he was doing instead of Saul taking responsibility he said the people wanted to do this for me <laughs> I've done what, you, what the, you said the Lord told me to do he said really he said what then is this lowing of cattle I hear and this bleeding of sheep well I thought the Lord would need a sacrifice and who is this over here in chains it was Agag king of the Amalekites what does God have need of this as a sacrifice what does God have need of a hostage and Samuel says these famous words to Saul your obedience is better than your sacrifice listen to me those who are watching it's time to obey every word every word it's time to obey I'm not calling you to be a literalist I'm calling you to be a biblicist to study the Word of God to live by the Word of God to walk by the Word of God and when you do then blessings are going to come upon your life somebody shout the glory for blessings I don't know about you but I want the blessings of God to be showered in my life amen showers of blessings to flow over me amen I want to encourage you today that if you have been in your season too long to check your obedience level where in your life are you in disobedience where in your life have you failed to do what God has called you to do this is the time for you to start walking in obedience ask God to forgive you Lord forgive me 
you taught, called me to obey, but I followed my own will. I'm sorry. Forgive me. And here's what the Bible says. That if you confess your sin, God is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Well, I, I, I'm a pretty good person, though. The Bible says if we say we have no sin, we're self-deceived and strangers to the truth. Well, I really am a good person. Paul says, no, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's no one who does good, not even one. There's none righteous, no, not one. Paul says that the wages of sin are death. The reason why you're in the state that you're in is because you've been disobedient and your disobedience has given way to sin. But forgiveness is free. God desires that none should perish, but all come to, uh, to, to repentance. If you repent, to repent means to turn around. I'm not going to go down that road any longer. Will you always be successful? No, because you're still flesh and blood. But remember, obedience is listening with the intent to do what it has been instructed to do. Do you all hear this today? Was I talking to anybody today? I don't know who was listening that this message was intended for you, but right where you are, we're talking a lot about COVID-19, but the truth of the matter is, is that there are seasons in which you find yourself and you've been waiting for that season to get over. I hear the Lord saying, your season will be over when you start to obey. Do you receive it today? Look at somebody and tell them time to obey. Time to obey. Listen, if you're here today or if you're watching or listening to the sound of my voice, I want you to understand that none of this will make any sense to you whatsoever unless you have a relationship with Jesus. Amen. The Lord of life is waiting for you. And all you have to do is open the door of your heart and let him in. Amen. That's what this is all about. God, I want to please you. And so I give my life to you. That's what those who are in this ministry have done. Those many, many, many who are watching have done. But if you're one who is watching, you have never done that. There's no time like the present. If you're a believer, but you know you've been laboring in disobedience, now it's time to come back to obedience. And I want to pray for this, for us. Would you let me pray for you? Lord Jesus, I thank you that your word is true. It's just. It's holy. And you've called us to repentance. You've called us to obedience. We first of all confess, oh God, our disobedience. We confess to you every place where we have fallen short of your glory. We confess to you where we have missed the mark. And we ask you, oh God, to forgive us, to cleanse us, to turn us around, oh God. Right now, if we've never given our lives to you before, we give it now of our own free will. And if we have given our lives, but we've been guilty of walking in disobedience, we rededicate and commit ourselves to you. Take us, oh God. Mold us and shape us after your will. Minister to us right at the very point of our need. And we do bless you and praise you for it now. In the mighty name of Jesus, you be glorified. You be exalted. And we do bless your name. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Now, if you made that commitment today, whoever you are, wherever you are, I want you to show yourself to somebody. I want you to let somebody know. Let me know if you'd like. You could do so by writing in the comment field. If you'd like to be part of our virtual congregation, just put in the comment field on, on, the, on the feed, hashtag KFC membership. Soon the doors will be open again and we want to invite you to come and worship with us. But until that day, we'll be faithful in bringing you the live stream. Look forward to seeing us on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. for our time of study. Let us know how we can pray for you. Send me a message through our Facebook page or send me a personal message on Messenger and we will agree in prayer for you because prayer changes things. I know you're tired. I know you're ready for this to be over, but it won't be long now. Disease is not of God. We bind it up in the name of Jesus and we speak healing virtue in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Come on, stand to your feet. Come on, sing, Prince. Come on. Forgiveness was born with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was born. Amen. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, clap your hands. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. You can focus back to me. Amen. We, we bless God for you today. We look forward to you spending your time with us. Amen. Listen, let me say this for everybody. Today is uh, the third Sunday in the month. We have, what is it, two more Sundays that we have or one more Sunday? Uh, next Sunday, will be. we have two more Sundays. So on the 31st, which will be fifth Sunday, uh, we, of course, will be casual with T-shirts and jeans on that day. But we're going to start something this month. This is for everyone who is a part of this ministry who would like to participate. On the last Sunday of every month, we're going to come and begin bringing a thanksgiving offering. Now, this is over and above your tithes and offerings. Doesn't matter the amount. This will be in gratitude. Just a way of saying, God, I thank you for what you have been doing in me. Amen. And so we want to start that in the month, this month, the month of May. On Memorial Day weekend, let's bring a thanksgiving offering unto the Lord. Amen. Let me remind those of you who are especially a part of Kingdom Fellowship, please, please, ma'am, please, sir, remember your tithe. Remember your offering. Please don't eat your seed. Submit it today. Submit it right now. Send it to us by Givelify or Cash App or use the PayPal link. 
we have obligations of this ministry and I thank you, you've been so faithful, but I want you to continue to be faithful so that we can do everything that God has called us to do and be faithful over everything he's given us. Amen? Amen. Were you blessed today? Were you blessed today? Those of you who are watching, if you are blessed today, thank you for hanging with us through all of our technical difficulties. If you were blessed today, just write in the hashtag, uh, the comment field right I was blessed. Thank you. Not to me, but thank God for it. Amen? Amen. Thank you for everyone who participated today. Continue to pray for Lady Cece, who is not here today, but is recuperating and recovering uh, at home. Continue to pray for her. Uh, thank for, uh, God for all everyone who came into the building today to assist with this service. We give thanks to God for our youngest member of the praise team, for Prince. Amen. We bless God for him. Amen. Everybody else, I'm not going to call you by name, but you know who you are. I thank God for each and every one of you. I love you. There's not a thing that you can do uh, about it. So now go in peace. Love the Lord. Serve him in all you do and in everything. Remember to be thankful to him. And may the peace of Jesus rest, rule, and abide within your hearts now, today, this moment, and forevermore. Amen and amen. Come on, clap your hands and give God glory. Amen. Glory to God. 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 Did you shut us off back there? On You have to do it on the switcher. Amen. Amen. You can end it on that one there if you haven't. Amen. I know I'm talking. Amen.